Okay, so we've got this phosphate buffer. If you calculate its pH using Henderson Hasselbach, you should get an initial pH of 7.02. Seems cool to most of you. Now I'm going to add so sodium hydroxide to adjust the pH of 7.4. What happens? This is similar to something we did in class, where except it's exactly the reverse of it. So let me show you how this works. We've got, uh, does anybody know, is this the acid or the base part of the buffer? And then we've got to think about this one too. I would think the one with more hydrogens is the acid part. Does that make sense? So, you got more hydrogens to give. Acid is a proton donor. That, that one has two hydrogens. The first one has one. Okay, so if this is a base and it's reacting with a buffer, it wants to react with the acid part of the buffer. Is that cool? Okay, so let's write the acid part. It's the H. You don't have to write the sodium because it's a spectator ion. You can if you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, H2PO4 minus plus the sodium hydroxide, or just hydroxide. So you got the buffer, you're adding sodium hydroxide, what happens? And you're going to see on the solution that I wrote up, or that is wrote up, uh, written up, it's solved a little bit differently. But however you want to solve it, there can be different ways. Okay, so you get H2O, the hydroxide gains a hydrogen, this loses a hydrogen. Notice that we just made the base part of the buffer. That always happens in a buffer type problem or uh, the buffer part of a, uh, what's it called, a uh, titration problem. This will go 100% to the right, the re or K will be infinite, the equilibrium constant. Why? Because if you have a strong acid and or a strong base in the reactants, it always goes 100% to the right. In this case, we have a strong base. So it's going to go to the right. Let's see where we were. Um, uh, let me get the numbers here. So for the acid, uh, we're given 130 grams. Uh, I'd really like that in moles. So you go 130 grams divided by the molar mass, which is 119, really 120, pretty much, grams per mole. That will get uh, this in terms of moles. I want that because uh, if you weren't, if it wasn't clear before, this is the stoichiometry part of the problem. Okay, the base, how much of the base we're adding, I'll just say x. Unknown x amount. Use your favorite variable there. Usually when we've done these before, you have a numerical value here. Uh, so I did it in one in class where you have a number here. Uh, but it doesn't matter, you can do it backwards. And that's how this is backwards. Usually this is given, and you solve for the new pH. But in this problem, this is not given, you have the pH, so you kind of work backwards. Okay, water, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we can say zero if you want, or you can totally ignore it. That column, it doesn't matter. And then the H, uh, PO4, 2 minus. That starts off with, let's see, 400 milliliters. Uh, times 1.8. So I want, again, moles here, so 400 uh, milliliters times 1.80 molar. That's going to be uh, in millimoles, so I've got to divide this by 1,000 to change it to liters. So this is in moles, this is in moles. So now, I'm going to subtract off from the reactants. Remember, on the unfavored side, the left side, I have to have a zero in order to continue on to Henderson Hasselbach or the ice table. So any guesses which one would be the smaller number? X. Has to be x. Otherwise, the buffer will be destroyed. So whatever you're adding to the buffer is always the smaller amount. You always have more of the buffer. So it's always going to be, it's going to be like minus x here. And then over here, plus x. And we don't really care about water, but just for fun, I'll write a plus x there. 
So it's whatever, 130 divided by 120 minus x, 0 uh, x if you want, and then uh, 0.4 times 180 if I divide 400 by 1,000 plus x. So there's my setup of that. Now I'm ready for the Henderson Hasselbach, but you're going to see again, it'll look a little backwards. Uh, I'm also ready for an eraser. Okay. Let's see if this all fits right here. Henderson Hasselbach is pH uh, equals pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. Okay. pH is given. Uh, it's the new pH of 7.4. So that's the new pH we're trying to get. The pKa should be given somewhere in the problem. Uh, it's, or in terms of the Ka, it's given as 6.3 times 10 to the minus 8. It's the same in the previous part of the problem where you find the initial pH. And so pKa is the negative log k. So those two parts, that's the same as when you find the initial pH. The thing that's different is the base of the acid. So in this case, B here, the base part, is going to equal uh, here for a base. So 0 0.4 times 1 point, uh, yeah, 1.8, whatever that is. Uh, plus x, that's the b part of the Henderson Hasselbach, and then the a part is the line here for the acid. I'm using Henderson Hasselbach, you could have used the ice table if you wanted to. So it's 130 over 120 minus x. So you're going to see in your Henderson Hasselbach, you know pH, you know pKa, the only thing you don't know is x. So you solve for x, and x equals 0.3852, depending on how many decimals you want. Uh, oh, and x would be, if you look back at your table, that's the moles of hydroxide added, or the moles of sodium hydroxide added. So that's the sodium hydroxide moles. Uh, it wanted not the moles, but the volume that you would have added to do that. Uh, the volume of sodium hydroxide, so I'm going to erase this part right here. If you have the molarity and you have the moles, you can find the volume. So molarity is moles over uh, volume. So to find the volume, that would be <coughs> moles over molarity, which is 0 0.3852 moles over the molarity, 6 molar. That turns out to be 64.2 milliliters. So again, the difference between a normal problem and this one is usually we give you this volume. So you'd know x. You could find the moles of it, but you wouldn't know the final pH. You wouldn't know this number. So you'd find this value be some number, this value be some number, and you put it in for B and A, and you solve for the left-hand side. For us, we're solving for the right-hand side. So it's a, kind of a reversal. Any questions on that? Yeah? How do we get X again? How do we get X? <laughs> uh, so you know pH, it's cool. We know pK, is that all right? So B and A are the unknowns. And those are straight from here. So you have to solve what, uh, there's one equation, one unknown, x, and everything else is 